Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Liscombe Bottom and Folly in uh, Dorset. It's about uh, nine miles to the north of Dorchester and we're going to be doing a, a three and a half mile circular route with maybe a little detour of another half mile or so basically around the edge of a natural bowl and indeed into it and we'll be exploring the remnants of a lost village, the Dorsetshire Gap and some stunning scenery. Now I'm filming right in the middle of the summer. It's another glorious sunny day, a lot of blue sky, a little bit of a wind to keep us cool. It should be perfect conditions for a walk so do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at a little lay-by in the road at Folly, which is just north of the little village of Plush. And uh, just about to head out onto the Wessex Ridgeway in a eastly direction. But just before I do, just point out this interesting house that's just behind me here. It's actually called the Old Fox at Folly. And if you look back at an old map, certainly one of 1902, it shows that it was a pub in fact, it was still a pub in 1915. I think it closed in the mid 20th century. And it was basically a refuge for travelers along the, the Ridgeway. But as you can see now, it's uh, very much uh, residential. And in fact, uh, this little road here is uh, on um, the Hardy Way, which is that 220 mile long distance path that winds its way through Dorset. It starts at Higher Bockhampton, which is where Thomas Hardy, the uh, um, author and poet, uh, was born. And it goes all the way to um, Stinsford Churchyard, where his heart was buried. It effectively um, links up uh, loads of places that uh, had a connection with uh, Thomas Hardy himself. So we're heading eastwards on the Wessex Ridgeway, another long distance path. I think that's 136 miles. It goes from um, Marlborough in Wiltshire all the way through to um, Lyme Regis on the edge of Dorset. And it was opened in 1994. <laughs> Folks, one thing I can promise you today is some quite stunning uh, views and uh, already uh, we've got this one here looking to the to the south. Now we're currently sort of making our way uphill. I think we're going to be um, heading along the top of the ridge and Liscombe Bottom is on the other side. But I just love the way this uh, valley has sort of set out on this side and the shadows of the sun really is quite beautiful. Whew. Well, we're continuing to make our way uphill along the side of a ridge, but we're taking it easy today. It's going to be a hot one. We've got plenty of uh, water for myself and Logan, but uh, we'll be going at a, a gentleman's pace today, I think. But a good excuse for a, another pit stop uh, to look at a view. And again, this is looking to the, to the, uh, to the west and it's so glorious. I know uh, sometimes it's difficult to uh, put uh, um, pictures into words, but isn't that lovely? And uh, I forget, I think it's called Ball Hill over there. If I've got that wrong, I'll put a, um, a text up on screen. But everything looking so lush. Of course, this is a, a big area for dairy farming around here. A lot of dairy farms. The pasture is ideal for um, dairy cattle and uh, milk production.
We're two thirds of the way up. Sorry, another view. It's beautiful up here. And now from here we can look and see well, that's sort of looking into the, the north and uh, very far distance, probably Somerset as well. So peaceful up here. And what I love when you start going um, up ridges in this sort of weather, just watching the birds sort of swoop down and use the sort of thermal currents. Fascinating stuff. We've made it to the top and boy was it worth uh, all the effort because from here, well the views, they just get even better and better. How about this? This is looking down into uh, Liscombe Bottom itself. Isn't that fantastic? So we will be heading um, to the south to uh, check out the remains of the sort of deserted village there and then we will be heading back up on the other side of the ridge. Actually from here, I don't know if you can see, it's quite hazy at the top of the ridge. There's a, a house and that's um, Hyden House. Uh, it was built quite recently, well, 2004, in a neoclassical star. And I was reading that it was sold for four and a half million uh, at 2014, together with about 146 acres. And also, actually, from up here, um, on the side of the ridge, you can make out... Uh, um, banks and those are boundaries of uh, an old medieval um, field system in a medieval village but I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we uh, get onto the far side. I'm now enjoying a nice little downhill bit. I'm keeping my eyes peeled for some cross dikes. Um, I've got an old map, something like nine of them dotted around the place. I haven't found any of them yet but uh, Apparently one was ex excavated, should I say, in 1957 and uh, there was evidence of uh, Bronze Age and Iron Age. But um, the historians reckon it was probably not defensive, more to do with them um, keeping uh, control of livestock. Although there is an Iron Age um, hill fort to the north, which we should see on the way back. But as I say, seeing as I, I haven't been able to spot any of these cross dikes, it's all a bit academic at the moment. I just met a group of uh, ramblers, our first bit of uh, human uh, uh, evidence for a while. So um, as we um, continue to head down, uh, Liscombe, um, it gets its name from, well, Lisk is sort of Saxon for um, uh, reeds and uh, uh, Coombe is, um, well, a valley. Um, and sure enough, uh, even today, there's uh, quite a lot of evidence of, um, well, it's quite boggy. Uh, in, at, at the actual bottom of the valley itself. Just a, a little update on the route. That's the track that we've been coming down. Uh, and we've got this mast here and behind the um, hedge there's a, a piggery and at this stage we now uh, start heading sort of diagonally sort of southeasterly uh, heading down into Liscombe itself. Ah, our first sight of uh, the remains of uh, the old cottage and uh, the chapel of Liscombe down in the valley. And that's our next destination. Wow, isn't this fantastic? So this is Liscombe. It was uh, recorded in uh, Saxon times and, uh, well, occupation 
can be assumed to have been uh, throughout the medieval period and then well either became undeveloped or shrunk like uh, quite a few of these lost uh, or abandoned villages in, in Dorset. But Liskin was sold off in 1880 and the sale map shows that there were only three buildings in the hamlet at the time. There was a, a late medieval barn, uh, this cottage and the chapel. But by 1900 a new access road had been built and a, a much larger farmhouse and more buildings added uh, just uh, to the south. But uh, let's give a, a little investigation. Well, on a day like today, you've got to have a cool down. A nice little freshwater stream. I think he's enjoying that. <laughs> I might join him actually. In fact, I might struggle to uh, get him out of there. He's, uh... <laughs> and I don't think you're going to get any deeper than that. What a lovely little stream. There's a little, um, I think that's a sheep dip area to the north. We'll have a look at that very shortly once I can get Logan out of here. <laughs> well, just to explain what we've got here, they've got to my left hand side remains of the, the cottage, which um, apparently was still whole and thatched and in use up until 1950. And, uh, it was certainly being lived in by a labourer in 1903 and it, it basically dates from the 16th or 17th century. It's sometimes known as the, the priest's house and then on the right is the, um, the chapel. Now it looks as though it's uh, in very, very good condition, doesn't it? It was, um, well, it was protected by a sort of Dutch barn being built over it in 1958. But that roof apparently collapsed in the 1990s and uh, finally in 2007 it was completely restored. But it was a small chapel with a, a 12th century chancel and later medieval nave. But whereas outside it looks like a, a blank cottage with a few windows but uh, clearly there's a, a Norman arch inside. And it was um, quite common for churches to start off like this uh, with no tower and no aisles and on a very small scale but most were then enlarged and improved but obviously this one wasn't. But apparently in 1903 it was being used as a bakehouse with a chancel used to store logs. But the chapel would originally have been built to be used by pilgrims travelling between Milton Abbey and Cern Abbas and apparently I was reading it had its first service for 500 years in 2007 after it had been restored. Now there was a third building, uh, the medieval barn, which up until the Second World War was in reasonable condition um, and it still had its 16th century roof but only parts of the walls survive today and I think they've been incorporated into uh, a new building because a large farmhouse was built here in 1880. Oh, it is great that you can uh, still have sort of public access to uh, places like this and uh, it gets you a chance to explore. Oh, look, there's the uh, <laughs> metal fireplace uh, halfway up on, the, would have been on the first floor. And there obviously was the, the main fireplace and the grate is still there. Oh. And some of the windows and oh, what a fantastic view <laughs> you would have had from here looking up uh, into the valley. All right, let's see if we can have a, a look inside the, the chapel itself. Ooh. Wow. This is amazing. Oh, shit. Have a look at this uh, lovely old beam across there. Uh, oh yeah, there's the uh, the arch I was talking about earlier. You can just about make out uh, could be a head of somebody on the the side there. Oh, gosh, I wonder where these um, stairs went to. Perhaps a little 
area to preach from. Beautiful windows. Isn't it fantastic that they've restored it as well and uh, there's still public access. So it really is a little, little gem in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we're going to say goodbye to uh, that quite enchanting little chapel. So we've now got a, uh, well, a little bit of an uphill bit <laughs> to say the least. But before we do, let's just check out this uh, little sheep dip or the remains of a, a sheep dip. This crystal clear stream. I think it flows down to um, join the River Piddle, I should imagine. But uh, you can probably see it if we just climb around. Oh, get up the bank. You can see it a little bit better from here. Looks like there's some little stickleback in there as well. The lovely sound of the, uh, the water on the little waterfall there. stop as we start the ascent on the uh, sort of eastern side of uh, Liscombe Bottom and but from here we've got this fantastic uh, vista of the, the valley itself. Of course we started right at the top where we came over the ridge and worked our way down. Right onwards and upwards we're about halfway up our ascent on the eastern side so we're going up the side of uh, Hog Hill and just by me here are those uh, remains of the um, medieval sort of um, farm system that we spotted right at uh, the other side um, and just at the top there's uh, some remains of a, an Iron Age Romano British homestead um, uh, not a defensive structure again, probably more to uh, do with um, uh, keeping animals uh, in stock more than anything else. Let's kick on. <laughs> At last, I found one of those cross dikes. I don't know if you can uh, make it out, but basically there's definitely a ridge just across here. <laughs> oh, well, at least we found one of them. and <laughs> we've made it to the top. What a view. Well, first things first, let me uh, give Logan some water. He deserve it, mate. Oh, good boy. Oh. So, I say it's fantastic, isn't it? We're now going to uh, circumnavigate the top of the... Um, the valley back on the homeward leg but before we do there's one more thing we need to see if we can find and explore the Dorsetshire Gap Well, folks, I finally found the Dorsetshire Gap. Now, I wouldn't have found it if it hadn't have been for a lovely bunch of uh, folk, part of the Dorset Ramblers who I bumped into. I, I was completely lost and was about to give up, but uh, they knew where it was, so I followed them. So what is it? Well, it's basically a, an ancient junction of old droving routes and ridgeway tracks that have been used, well, from the medieval ages all the way through the 18th century. And... Uh, there are no roads around here. A lot of the routes will be making use of the contours in the, in the ground. 
But uh, what's fascinating about this place, apart from it being a, an ancient sort of a junction, is that there's a, a box here that was put in 1972 by a chap, um, and folk often leave messages in there. So let's go and have a look. And indeed here it is. I say it's been here, or there has been a box here since 1972, and gosh, it's full of little books where I think just people, and there's a pencil there as well, so people just put their notes in and what have you. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'm so glad that uh, we found the Dorsetshire Gap. As I said, I was about to give up, and I'd never have found it if it hadn't been for this lovely group from the uh, North Dorset Ramblers. Although, coming back, uh, I did spot a sign, which I totally missed. Um, I wasn't able to film too much at the Gap because uh, they were all having their lunch and I obviously wanted to respect their, their privacy. Okay, so we're now gonna head back uh, to Folly. thing to uh, have a look out on the way back is an Iron Age hill fort that's just behind me here, uh, Nettlecombe Tout. And this is probably the best view that we're going to get at it uh, on the walk. Uh, there's a steep hillside on the northwest and northeast and there's a, a bank and ditch on the southeast side. The original entrance was actually on the southwest end of a rampart but there's there just the one rampart with a, a ditch about 10 foot deep but the whole area is about 15 to 20 acres but um, it's thought that either the fort was either unfinished or destroyed. Uh, sort of historians are a little unsure as to which. Well folks we've come to the end of our walk we hope you enjoyed it if you did please do give us a, a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page Dave's Countryside Walks. We thought we'd do the end scene here in front of the chapel and the uh, ruined uh, cottage. What a beautiful idyllic setting. <laughs> and we've had a super walk today as well. The weather, of course, has been fantastic and the scenery, well, quite stunning. So we're off back to uh, the Brace of Pheasants pub in Plush for a well-earned pint of ale. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. <laughs> Good boy.